What's up everyone and welcome to Jayconomics. My name is Jay and it's a pleasure to meet all of you. On this channel, we take a look at anything related to finance with a strong focus on investing. So if that sounds like something you want to be a part of, then please consider subscribing and liking this video to help me on my quest to befriend the big, bad YouTube algorithm. Top 3 Growth Stocks for October 2020 We've seen a lot of volatility in the market as of late, big red days, and lots of bag holders. It's a painful reminder that when you are up massively on a speculative stock, there is absolutely nothing wrong with taking some profits on the way up. In this video, we're going to talk about three picks that I like for some long-term, massive gains. Last month I gave you my top three, and we will review how those stocks have performed over the last month in just a second. And after that, we will go over my top three for this month that I think are in a fantastic spot to bring exponential gains to your portfolio over the long term. Before we start, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of my Jakeonomics family. We've grown so quickly, now over 4,900 subs, and I'm just very humbled and grateful for your support. Let's hit that 5k today. To show that gratitude, I created a free Discord server, so be sure to join that smart money squad. The link is in the description below. So make that thumbs up turn blue and subscribe if you're new, it really does help the channel grow. And now without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so let's quickly review our three picks from last month, Docebo, C, and CloudMD. I recommended Docebo at $48 Canadian, and today we're at $50 a share Canadian after a dip and consolidation. I would expect this to keep rising in the near future. Now I do have a very small position in Docebo currently. Next up was C Limited, and I recommended it to my viewers at $154 per share when I bought in myself. Today we're sitting at $172 per share, representing a 12% increase since last month. My last pick for last month was CloudMD, one of my favorite stocks in the entire market right now. I first recommended CloudMD at $0.84 cents Canadian on my channel, and last month I said it was still a buy at $1.36 Canadian. Today, we're sitting at $2.05 Canadian, representing a 51% increase since I continued to recommend it last month. At one point, we even hit all-time highs of $2.40 Canadian briefly, and we are now consolidating getting ready for the next move. And for me, this is just the beginning for this stock. I think this stock will be a $30, $40, $50 dollar stock in the next 5-10 years, so it's a long-term play for me. Alright, so let's jump into our top 3 stocks for this month to make you some money with some long-term growth stocks. The first company on our list today is Lightspeed. Lightspeed POS is a Canadian company headquartered in my hometown of Montreal, Canada. Being as such, I've been a bull on Lightspeed for a long time. Now, they are finally listed on the New York Stock Exchange and they're showing lots of positive signs as of late, so I figured now would probably be a good time to include them in one of my videos. I just never got around to it before. In Canada, they trade under the ticker symbol LSPD.TO and in the US they trade under LSPD. So what is Lightspeed? Well, in one sentence, it's the little known competitor to Square and Shopify. And we will get into how each of these platforms differentiate from one another in just a second. Lightspeed's focus is on medium-sized brick-and-mortar companies and retailers, kind of like Square in this regard. Its users usually have a full in-store setup. Now, Lightspeed is slowly widening its consumer base to include the larger chains and brands such as Adidas, for example, for their pop-up stores. And in the past year alone, Lightspeed has acquired 7,000 retailers and is experiencing very rapid growth. So all three platforms I talked about, Lightspeed, Square, and Shopify, well, they all provide a high level of service for their customers. Each platform has unique strengths which can be tailored to your business depending on your company size, budget, and goals. For example, if you're a mom and pop shop, well then the costs associated with both Shopify and Lightspeed may be a little bit on the expensive side, so you may choose to go with Square. If you're a larger retailer with significant physical presence, Lightspeed is very well suited for you. 
once integrated with their cloud-based offering, there's no better way to implement multi-channel commerce than with Lightspeed. The pattern that we're seeing between these three businesses is a move towards smooth integration of the online and offline environments, all the while improving user experience. Small to medium, independent sellers tend to like the low price and ease of use of Square, whereas established retail stores who once only enjoyed the solid POS system that Lightspeed offers, well now they have an opportunity to integrate e-commerce and mobile payments through Lightspeed Cloud. So because of the illness, investors were worried about a collapse in Lightspeed's transaction volumes as retail locations and restaurants remained shut for months. But that didn't happen. The management team led by CEO Dax Da Silva decided to pivot to digital payments, and I think the fact that they were able to adapt and guide Lightspeed through the tough times should give investors even more confidence in this company's ability to grow. It surely did that for me. Because of this shift to digital payments, Lightspeed is now more diversified. Not only is the company exposed to higher traction for e-commerce, but a recovery in brick and mortar retail and restaurants should help the company grow even faster. With everyone confined to their homes during this crisis, adoption accelerated. Online shopping surged 99% in Canada during the illness. Despite this growth rate, the majority of shopping across the world is still done physically. Brick and mortar stores are still dominant in developing parts of the world as well, which means there's plenty of room for payment software companies to expand. The runway for Lightspeed stock is as wide as ever in my opinion. So the bottom line is this, the NYSC listing, the diversified business model, and the e-commerce traction could make this stock unstoppable in the future. This growth stock deserves every tech investor's attention in my opinion. Being listed on the NYSE now will boost Lightspeed's profile and help it attract more capital. And with a higher valuation, this will allow the company to fund its operations even more and even acquire smaller firms to push its growth forward. So yeah, trading at a price to sales ratio of 23 currently, this growth stock is by no means cheap. But with the long-term strategy Lightspeed has in the market that they're in, as well as the recent deals and changes that they've made, I'm even more bullish than ever for the long-term of this company. We could see something similar to Shopify one day. Of course, while preparing for this video this week, the stock price jumped from $41 Canadian all the way up to $48.75 Canadian, which is where we closed that on Friday. So its market cap now sits at under 4 billion USD. Shopify and Square for comparison's sake sits at $132 billion and $83 billion respectively. So is there room for Lightspeed to close the gap? Well, I think the answer is a big resounding yes. I do have a position in Lightspeed. It's not as big as I want right now, but I'm definitely going to increase my position sizing as I just never got to do it. Uh, I currently just own 12 shares of the company at an average cost of $33 Canadian. And I've kind of just been hoping for a dip below my cost and it just has never came. So I will definitely be adding to my position this month when I do see an opportunity. Chargepoint, ticker symbol SBE is our second company of the day. It's going public through reverse merger with Switchback Energy Corporation. This play intrigues me for many of the same reasons that Envision Solar did in August. Uh, Envision Solar is actually rebranded to Beam Global, by the way, so their ticker symbol is now Beam. In my top three picks of August, I talked about this company and I explained why I was bullish and was invested into it myself. That stock is up about 16% from when I recommended it, and I see a lot of great things happening for that stock in the future. If you want to hear more about that company, be sure to check out this video linked at the top of the screen right now, as well as in the description below. And so Chargepoint and Beam are basically cousins. Yet Chargepoint is actually the more established family member and currently has a market valuation of $2.4 billion. Chargepoint has more than a whopping 23,000 charging locations worldwide. Chargepoint designs, develops, and manufactures hardware and software, as well as a cloud subscription platform for electric vehicles. 
As a user of ChargePoint, you can download a free mobile application that tracks real-time data and allows drivers to locate and navigate to unoccupied charging stations. Drivers can also track their charging status and usage as well as their greenhouse gas and fuel savings. Over 60% of all publicly accessible networked EV charging stations are ChargePoint stations or run on the ChargePoint network, and nearly 40% of all EV drivers are ChargePoint members. Pretty crazy stats there. As the EV revolution continues to evolve, ChargePoint is positioned very well to grow with it. They're the worldwide leader and should continue to grow nicely in the years to come as states and countries begin to move towards electrifying. Remember, this is not your typical EV speculative play. They have a product and they have proven to be successful already. On top of all this, they, as they continue to grow their revenues at a projected 40 plus percent per year for the foreseeable future, ChargePoint estimates that their gross margins will also significantly increase over that same time span, projecting 42% in 2026 as opposed to 24% in 2020. Another really great stat to look at with ChargePoint is this. This graphic shows that their top 25 customers, right? And, and, and what you'll see with this graph is that as time goes on, each customer actually pays more and more. An impressive 14x cumulative spend, so it's a very sustainable business model. So right now, looking at the charts, we're sitting at $14.66 at Friday's close. The warrants are trading at $4.29, meaning they are trading at a premium right now. We've seen how volatile SPACs can be, and so at these levels, I wouldn't be jumping in all at once. For full transparency, I am not currently invested in ChargePoint, but if we see the $13 range for the stock and we see the warrants dip to the low threes for the warrants, then I definitely will be getting in. My play in this space has been Beam, and I'm pretty happy with my position there. So if we don't see this dip with Switchback Energy and with, uh, with ChargePoint, I will not be chasing this up. Last but not least, my third pick for this month is Flying Eagle Acquisition Corp, who is merging with Skills. Now this is a really interesting one for me. One would say that this eagle flew right under the radar for me up until this week, honestly, when I started to do more research on the company. Skills is a platform that essentially turns any mobile game on iOS and Android into one that you can play with your friends or strangers for cash, prizes, or points. And so my bullish thesis on Skills is that everyone, and I mean everyone, does like a little bit of competition. Skills was pretty much founded under that belief. So Skills is the pioneer of casual esports, making money for developers and increasing player engagement at the same time. Mobile esports is growing massively. And what is even more attractive to me about Skills is that they have barely tapped into the international markets yet. This is a huge market opportunity. And just like I love the emerging market play in Southeast Asia of C Limited last month, Skills to me has a similar massive opportunity outside of North America and has the competitive advantages. Let's take Unity as a comparable. Both companies are platforms for game developers. The main difference is that Unity is mainly used to create games, while Skills is a way to monetize games and increase engagement. The old business model is not ideal. Ads interrupt gameplay and no one ever liked in-game purchases. This new innovative business model Skills has is democratizing mobile esports essentially. The company is projecting 2022 revenue to be $555 million, a 57% compound annual growth rate from expected 2020 revenues of about $225 million. So let's go back a second and to back up my point from earlier about emerging markets, let's take this into consideration. Unity has largely tapped into the international markets, generating over 70% of its revenues from outside America. In contrast, Skills has generated less than 10% of its revenues from outside North America, even though the international market is four times bigger than the domestic market. They estimate that the total addressable international market at over $125 billion. So if Unity, 
a company with major direct competitors like Unreal Engine, for example, and a slower growth rate than Skills, and slower growth can see a lot more love from investors and trade at a higher multiple, then it doesn't make any sense for me that a company like Skills, with basically no competition in their specific niche and stronger growth numbers in a wide open market, is trading at such a low valuation. In my opinion, the market will catch on to this eventually, and I will be a Skills shareholder by then. Now, in terms of this transaction, once it closes, Skills will have roughly $250 million in cash, and the public company investors will own around $849 million of the resulting $3.6 billion post money valuation of the company. Skill CEO Andrew Paradise said that about 10 different SPACs were pursuing the Skills deal, but he ended up choosing Feek because of his relationship with Harry Sloan and his team. And as some of you already know, this same SPAC team took online sports betting company DraftKings public through a SPAC in April, and we all know how successful this has been. I do not currently have a position in Flying Eagle Acquisition Corporation, but I will be looking for the next opportunity to open one up. So let's talk about my favorite industry at the moment with no visible bear case for me. Of course, my two babies that I've been talking about over and over and over again on my channel, CloudMD and Well Health Technologies, are the cream of the crop, in my opinion, in this industry, especially as a Canadian myself. So, that industry is telehealth, if you haven't guessed yet. And, you know, we also got American telehealth companies, which I think will continue to be solid performers, such as Teladoc, Lavongo, newly IPO'd American Well and eventually him and hers, who is, uh, who is completing their reverse merger pretty soon. Now, I won't go into detail about CloudMD and Well Health Technologies, which are my favorite uh, two plays right now in the whole market, but uh, you can definitely find those videos on my channel. I've also interviewed the CEO of CloudMD, so that video is extremely informative and I would definitely recommend watching that if you want to know more about not only the company, but the entire space in general. This is an entire industry that is absolutely a no-brainer for me, and the more research that you do into it and the more thinking that you do about it, the more obvious that it will be to you as well. So I highly suggest you start doing your DD on that. All right, that wraps it up for today's episode. Let me know in the comments below if you're invested into any of these companies or if you do plan on investing. What is your position sizing? Is this a short-term trade for you or a long-term hold? And guys, if this video brought you some value, then please smash that like button for me as it really does help the channel a lot. And if you do want more content like this, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell to be notified when any new video comes out. And of course, please feel free to join our Smart Money Discord server. It's free and we've got a great growing community. So until next time, take care and invest. Smart.